so this is why you know in the contemplative studies program that we did in what seems like lifetimes ago we spent quite a bit of time in the foundations built baked into the foundations of studying buddhism enough trauma informed medicinal self reflection because it is true that while all of that all of those statements are true from a buddhist perspective without an eye on the shadow there is always a chance that the medicine can be poison there's always a chance there's a, there's a chance that therapy can be poison there's a chance that trauma therapy can be poison we have to always look at things that way just because things work in a certain way for some people how you employ there's so many variables to consider in trying to help someone heal you never know if you're stepping into the bear trap even if if even if you as the therapist guide a support system don't have a full picture and you have just good intentions you never know what you're stepping into you never know if you could reinforce this dynamic you could you could you could say oh we'll just speak up or or you could say you could just say just calm down <laughs> Right? You, you just, you see someone in high arousal or activation and you just say, well, just, just calm. Because you have the best intentions, but you don't see the full picture. Just calm down. Or you don't see the full picture and you say, well, just get angry with them. Tell them off. What's the problem with saying that is that what you're asking someone to do from the labyrinth point of view or from the basement point of view is stare too quickly and too early into the face of the dragon where they risk being consumed. So it has to be done with, this is why you should give yourself plenty of room to learn, to listen, to get to know, to become familiar with your own mind or with the mind of the people that you're working with.